So okay, I think we were going to start our uh, online seminar today. And first, uh, first that I, I would like to, on behalf of Zhang Christian Hospital, to say thank you for um, all of our friends um, from um, different organizations, different hospitals, even different countries. Thank you so much to join today's um, online seminar. And actually, we have organized a series of the um, activities on about talking about that and how to um, respond to um, COVID-19. And this is the first session. Uh, for the first session, we, we invite our um, hospitals and um, the infection control department director. We are going to presentation how some Christian hospital fighting the COVID. So Dr. Liu, the presentation will be on um, today's uh, major presentation. Before we start our presentation, I would like to invite the um, our um, the uh, representative um, in, in TACO of Thailand, um, Professor um, Tong Zhenyuan, yeah, Tong Da Shi, um, give us um, the um, opening remarks. Yeah. Well, Please. thank you very much, Irina, um, Dr. Leo, and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, South Cup. Uh, mm -hmm. It is my great pleasure to do to in this webinar. Uh, during the current challenging crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic, as most people feel uneasy, anxious, even panic, as of April 23rd, there are more than 2.6 million current cases of the COVID-19 pandemic around the world. And the global death toll, which is more than 185,000, nearly half of the world is in lockdown, and billions are discouraged from leaving their home. Taiwan is very fortunate so far, and the impact on our daily life is relatively minor. Thanks to early and active campaign to diagnose, track, isolate, and mitigate cases in Taiwan. As of April 23rd, Taiwan's number of the cumulative confirmed cases was only 427, and the death toll was six. Okay. Taiwan is excluded from the World Health Organization. Okay. And the organization might not help Taiwan at all. Nevertheless, coronavirus know neither political boundaries nor nationalities. All countries and global health institutions should cooperate with each other, and Taiwan is striving to be a member of the global team to fight against the most serious pandemic within the last hundred years. So with the above successes, Taiwan can help, it's willing to help, and it's helping the world. Particularly, around 5,000 Taiwanese enterprises operate in Thailand, and about 150,000 Taiwanese being people and their relatives reside in Thailand. So any COVID-19 contagion in Thailand, we are jeopardize the health of not only Thai people, but also Taiwanese people in Thailand and across the border. That is, we care Thai people's health and epidemic contention as much as Thai government. Taiwan and Thailand are like a family and brothers to each other. Taiwan can help and is willing to help Thailand. Taiwan can help in terms of not only donating critical medical materials so like us, we have donated several days ago on April 21, uh, 21st, uh, 200 million, excuse me, 200,000 masks to Thailand. But most importantly, sharing management experience of public health system, as well as technology to contain and overcome the COVID-19 pandemic, including at least traditional medical technology, as well as innovative AI, artificial intelligence, intelligent technology. To promote experience sharing and uh, technological cooperation between Taiwan and Thailand. So we are so pleased to host uh, many web webinars so far. And we are so pleased to co-host today's web webinar to share the experience on our uh, response to COVID-19 in Zhanghua Christian Hospital in Taiwan. Look forward to Dr. Liu's wonderful presentation and all your participation in discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, the um, uh, Ambassador Tong, the, uh, and his encourage. And 
Today, the speaker, Dr. Liu, and he is the attending physician in the Department of Infection Diseases of Zhanghua Christian Hospital. He had served as a director of in infection disease from 2010 to 2018. And from 2004 till now, he is also the surveyor of the infection prevention and control of Taiwan CDC. And he has a lot of experience um, in the um, 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 infection control, particularly um, Dr. Liu, he is uh, more interesting in the HIV and, and AIDS and researches. So today we ask, uh, we invite Dr. Liu to give us the, um, some of the experience or, or in, in part of that, the, our hospitals and um, what we do um, to in, in accordance with the um, government policy of Taiwan to um, fighting the um, COVID-19. So Dr. Liu, please. Yeah. Uh, Microphone. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and Tong Da Shi. It's my great honor to have a small speech here. Another slide. It's my great honor to be here to have a small talk uh, about coronavirus disease, COVID-19 in Taiwan, uh, what we have done here. As we know, coronavirus is an invalid RNA virus. It means alcohol could destroy it. And there are four subgroups, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Common human coronavirus commonly infected people who to get upper respiratory tract infections. However, three of them would cause severe infections such as MERS-CoV, SARS-CoV, and the newly discovered SARS-CoV-2. We also now, from clinical presentations, from asymptomatic mild disease up to 80%, and some of them are cause pneumonia, severe pneumonia, or even acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, and it result in death. From the infection route, we also know uh, when a patient infected with COVID-19, he coughed out, and then the droplet would evaporate into the air, and it would cause cross contact, either from direct or indirect contact, or from airborne transmission. But when some of the droplets dry up and they become deposition onto the surface in all area, it could be resuspended into the air. When a susceptible people get it, in health in infected droplets, it would might become infected. We call it the format transmission. From the early in Germany study, we could now asymptomatic contact would result transmission. Here we issued a case from China, Wuhan. He come to Germany for a business meeting. And then he transmitted the virus to patient one, even though he had no symptom. When he go back to Wuhan, China, he got in diagnosed to be COVID-19 infection. However, the patient one also transmitted the disease to patient three and patient four when they are still in asymptomatic condition. So the virus could be very hard to prevent. From the global, we now 
this is one hour before. There are 2.7 million cases in the global, and the mortality rates reach 7%. Uh, here is the Japan's 11,000 mortality rate, 2.4%, and the uh, Philippines, and uh, here the Thailand, 2,080 cases. Mortality rate is about 1.7%. And here, Malaysia, 1.7% mortality. And the Vietnam, uh, 268 cases, no mortality. Burma, 123 cases. And uh, Papua New Guinea, only case, eight cases. And here is our data in Taiwan. Up to two days ago, we have 426 COVID-19 patients, and it gets uh, 1.4 mortality. So let me uh, slide to introduce our COVID-19 in Taiwan. The data is up to uh, April 19. Uh, in the beginning, in Taiwan, January 17th, our government started to cross, do a cross surveillance from Wuhan with patient, uh, people come back from Wuhan with fever or upper respiratory track infection. Later, we, one week later, we spent the area, travel history to Hubei area. And very quickly, in the early February, to Hong Kong, Guangdong province, Macau, etc. From February 16th, we started to have a community surveillance because we, in Taiwan, we got a patient who has no travel history and become got COVID-19, so we start to screening community cases, and especially in the hospital. In, on February 28th, we start to do with pneumonia with, even without travel history, and uh, March 21st, global as pandemic, and uh, March 25th, all healthcare worker with fever and the respiratory tract symptoms, they should be, have a test for this. And the April 1st, all pneumonia and the loss of smell and the test. And later on, even with diarrheal patient complaint, we should check up. So we perform a gradual scale of surveillance in Taiwan. This is a surveillance trend by source. Initially in Feb January, only high-risk group travel abroad or exposure to in-test cases are, were tested. And some of them are home quarantine patients because they have contact with the high-risk patients. And in mid-February, we start to have community screening and uh, uh, the test test is also in, boring is also increased. Here, um, March, miss March, because many of our people came back from Europe, United States, they are students and some of them are traveler, come back to Taiwan. So we have in, increased the volume. And then in the early April, we have a spring holiday. So the, some of them, we also have noticed some of the COVID-19 would have present as diarrhea. So we increase the checks, PCR test, and they, more than 10,000 cases was performed within a week. This is a documented COVID-19 infection in Taiwan. The feature is stated on date of symptom. Initially, we have imported case, and there are only a few cases of them are local transmitted. Here, we on March, we could see Many, many of them are come back from the world, come back to Taiwan. And um, 
70, 47 patients are male. And the, and the median age is 33 years old. People who are older than 60 years old uh, count for 15%. And the, the source of infection was primarily in Taiwan, 14%, imported 86%. Most of them come from US, UK, French, Spain, Turkey. And the, according to the severity of Lady. WHO criteria, 70% or mild illness, including asymptomatic 22 patients, and the pneumonia 22%, severe pneumonia or ARDS 7.6%. The prognosis, we have six patients died, and the, the isolation count for 40 5.1% discharge 40%, remain in admission 58%. When we look at the age distributions, most of our patients were in the age group of 20 to 29 and 30 to 39 because they come back from over the world. And some of them are older than 60 years old because they are retired person and had to have a traveler in the world. So it's count a lot here. However, when we put the age distribution into the instance of COVID-19 in age group, the most people also in occurred in 20 to 29% is cause a 26.9 per million population. Uh, for comparison from of the initial uh, 100 cases and uh, the late 295 cases, we could notice that um, the sex is no difference. However, the initial 100 cases that were older, the median age is 44 years old. The late 29, uh, 295 cases is 31 years old. For the severity, the form initial case, uh, mild disease only count for 50, 57%, and the later 75% cases. However, from the discharge and follow-up, there was no significant difference. From the day of the isolation and the admission, we could find from illness onset to the isolation, 26 days in the initial cases uh, be, be, for the people discharged before March 31st, and uh, from admission to the isolation, 20 days. From admission to discharge, 22 days. Uh, for the, the isolation after April 1st, the illness onset to the isolation, 24 days, only two days shorter. But we could notice that here is a patient who was admitted for 83 days here. Because in Taiwan, we uh, discharge patient or the isolation of criteria, we need to have three consecutive undetected PCR of oropharyngeal swab and sputum. In the 22 cases asymptomatic COVID-19 cases, uh, most of them are also in 22, 29 age, age group and uh, more than 80 or 60 years old age group. We also could notice that the sputum swab negative conversion occurred in 18 days. It takes a, a long time to be negative sputum. We also could notice uh, one case is it takes uh, 41 days to be negative. 
from the enhanced surveillance for health worker in hospital and long term uh, care facility, we are taught this was performed in March 30 to April 15th. A total account 1,852 1, person, and all are undetected for SARS CoV 2 PCR. How about the COVID 19 in our hospital? Up to yesterday, we have admitted patients for 11 cases. We could notice from the initial four, four cases, they are admitted in uh, late January and mid February. Um, the most come, uh, the first case is from Wuhan. She, she transmitted the disease to the, her husband. And the third case and the fourth case are local, local transmitted without get uh, find a obvious infection focus. And the data of after March 21st, all patients are come back from the world, Philippines, Belgium, London, New York, Switzerland, New York, Indonesia. We are lucky we have only one patient with severe pneumonia and a two mild pneumonia. Others with pneumonia are quite mild too. Most of them were diagnosed by a chest CT scan because their chest x-ray was relatively only mild increased in infiltration of patches. <clears throat> Here is the treatment protocol. Most of our patients we have uh, prescribed or set for suspicious concomitant with influenza infection, so we do not have the definite diagnosis for influenza. Uh, some of them we also prescribe prostatin because uh, to, for both com common community, typical and atypical pathogen. And uh, two of them also prescribe several sporin for irritated infection of diabetes. No patient was prescribed azithromycin. Only one patient received hydroxychloroquine. And a CT scan was, was performed in the outpatient setting after they were discharged. From the CT scan, we could find, um, yes, most of them have uh, pneumonia page there. However, the case number nine have no pneumonia page 10 either, no pneumonia page. And the 11 cases, only very, very mild infiltration found. Uh, let me introduce my first case, uh, the laboratory test that we could find Initially, we could find uh, liver cell was relative lower than expected. And uh, the CRP label was a little bit elevated. <clears throat> and here is uh, her vital sign, a uh, body temperature in blue, the highest record each day. Uh, we could find she had a fever for nine days and it declined to within limits. And uh, we have a special remark we should pay attention to the saturation of pulse oximeter. Uh, it, it, it's from 98% decline gradually to 92% here for just the first three days. However, she did not receive any oxygen therapy and it recovered gradually day by day. And then before discharge, he, she is quite well. Here is her chest x-ray. We could not serious. The, the left one is on the admission. The second one, right one is the follow-up. We could notice many infiltration pace over post down area. And uh, we performed CT scan. Uh, many gram grass opacity over post down. And uh, yes, we just before her discharge, we follow up a new chest radiography CT scan. It shows significant improvement. Then the second case is her husband. Um, there was a relative low liver cell percentage count here on the second blood test. And the CRP were also within normal limits. 
And uh, this gentleman has no fever at all. He only had very mild respiratory symptom, such as sneezing only. No, no symptom. He, the saturation of pus oximeter is also good. But we could notice the pus rate is a bit higher than one, 100 per minute. Here in the initial 10 days, um, the heartbeat is higher. After the 10 days, the heartbeat returned to within normal, normal limits, even though he had no fever at all. Uh, this is a chest X-ray from him on the admission there. On the follow-up, we could see pneumonia patch over the left lower lobe area. And uh, we performed a CT scan. We could find uh, a ground glass opacity here and uh, here and here. It's presented also multiple focus. Then the third case, we have a special we need to special mention is this uh, 17 years old uh, female student. Uh, she came back from New York with a cough of, for two weeks and fever up to 38.5 degrees for one day. Initially, because she had uh, fever and come back from United States, so we admit her and uh, perform throat swab and sputum. Both are negative, and the chest X-ray is relatively clear. On the even on the third time of PCR detection, it's also negative. However, but in our pediatrician, they are very concerned this patient might got COVID nineteen because her classmate was diagnosed to have COVID nineteen in Shanghai, China. Even though the test is very weakly passing, we still think she might have COVID-19. So we decided to perform a chest CT scan. And in the night, we could see there is a small pneumonia patch over left lower lobe area. So on the second day, we advise patient to cough more severely. And finally, we got the report. Here is the positive test. So in a, any suspicious case, we should be very careful to screw it complete as possible. And uh, another case, we also have a very interesting lab test, uh, West and one of PCR testing for SARS-CoV-2. This is the case number three. Uh, when, he was, uh, when he was detected to positive, um, later on early, uh, March negative to it turned to negative. After two negative tests, then it became positive. Because at that time we have some uh, news from Korea or other country. They say coronavirus SARS CoV 2 could be reinfected. But I don't think so. It's reinfected. It might be inadequate clearance. From this case, uh, uh, March 10th, March 13th, uh, become positive, and uh, 17th, 19th, positive too. To March 21st, later two, two time negative, and then positive again. And then finally, we got three consecutive undetected PCR, and patient was discharged. So maybe this virus. In this case, we, we have also performed serology test for him. His antibody is presented, even though the sputum remains positive for the SARS-CoV-2. So what should we do in this pandemic COVID-19 area? To protect healthcare worker is to preserve hospital first, then to save life. Um, here we could see if from the New York Times, uh, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. In the early March, we have very similar condition, uh, only a few local infected, and uh, some of them were uh, imported. But however, from mid March and uh, to late March and early April, the it is widespread in Hong Kong and Singapore. We, we are functioning, we have only very limited 
or locally transmitted cases in Taiwan. So what we do in this uh, condition, we since SARS in 2003, we use traffic control bundle. Traffic control bundle includes triage outside of hospital. And we should clearly define zone of risk, such as contamination, transition, and clear zones. The contamination at the growing growing in traditional zone and a strict requirement of protocol for personal protective equipment use, PPE use. And at every checkpoint, we need to have hand disinfection. It's adequate, maybe it's adequate for SARS, but it's not adequate for SARS-CoV-2. So we have enhanced, in Taiwan, we have enhanced traffic, traffic control bundle. Two, another item should be added. One is isolation ward in contamination zone and the quality ward in transitional zone for a typical manifestation and waiting for final diagnosis. And all visitors entering hospital should have checkpoint hand disinfection and a face mask use. So they may go in into the hospital. In the Wuhan market, a patient may be get infection and they transmit to his or her family. And then this patient may go to the local community and clinics and result in the amplification. If we without a enhanced traffic control bundle, then widespread in the community um, transmit occurred. It result over fume of the hospital. If we have enhanced traffic control bundle, we will broke here be between the hospital and the community. So community, hospital, community transmission cycle should be broke, should be interrupted. Here is a, a visual for the idea for everyone to enter the hospital public area. We need to have hand disinfection. And when we go into the nurse station, hand, hand washing here too. When a healthcare worker needs to go into the patient room, he must, she or she must put on PPE at this area and into the transitional room. Of course, some patients would come from the ER, emergency department, that they from up to triage station. If they are highly suspected, they all positive diagnosis, they would be placed into isolation ward. Or if the diagnosis is still pending, they would be admitted to transitional zone quarantine ward. When we go out, we return to the nurse station from hot zone to intermediate zone and then clean zone. We need to remove our PPE at this transitional zone. And at every step, we should have a disinfection, hand washing with alcohol. In Taiwan, we have a strong central epidemic command center. They, most of the, they have a daily one hour press communications. The communications would serve as a policy announcement and education to the public. For example, a public education, home isolation or quarantine, or self-control monitoring, hand hygiene, alcohol or soap with water, uh, avoid touching face, eyes, nose, mouth, mask use, environment disinfection, alcohol or house bleach use. For the public aggregation, the indoor, it should be limited to 100%. For outdoors, no more than 500%. For social distancing, indoor 1.5 meter and outdoor 1 meter. If this could, be, could not be met, we should wear a mask. Um, here is Taiwan mask team. Our uh, President Tsai order to build up a 60 industry line in 25 days for mask for Taiwan. And then it's achieved on March 6. And uh, to prevent the mask panic buying, especially for the mask, medical use mask. 
the production volume in Taiwan from late January 1.88 million per day to 50 million per day on April 10th. The price also cut down from $8 to $6 to $5. $1 US dollar is equal to 30 NTD dollars. And for sale, where to distribute it, uh, it makes uh, all people to available and affordable. Initial four main convenience store, uh, 7-Eleven, Family Mark, OK Mark, uh, High Life Mark, they distributed. Later, we have a pharmacy add-on. And the pharmacy add-on is by the information and technology we could show where they, we could get the mask is available in the, it's very, yeah. It's about five, three minutes per week, so two, nine piece per two weeks. And we also need a healthcare ID for necessary to everyone. Uh, since us, we also had any accreditation of infection prevention and control by Taiwan. All sorts of hospitals need to have this. And the alcohol based hand hygiene since 2007 at all chest point and each bed. Uh, he is Sanghua Christian Hospital command system. And uh, we have many COVID-19 meetings for our planning. For infection control, we developed at least 68 soap for our hospital use. And uh, for the traffic control, uh, screening and triage, patient and the zone of risk installation ask alcohol dispensions at each checkpoint. For example, for the poster control time and video, uh, only which which there is restriction all show wear a mask. We you need to have a health ID to go in at the opening hour and we advise our family to have video chat with their family. And we have very limited gates for the visitor and many gates was closed. And from the study of uh, recent study, how long will SARS-CoV in, in the air? It produces half-life is about three hours. But on the surface of copper, it takes eight, four hours. Cash bowl, 24 hours. Stainless or plastic, uh, 72 hours to disappear. But how long will SARS-CoV-2 survive in hand? The virus will live long enough until you wash your hands. So at each gate entrance, we have alcohol here and to protect hospital. And at each exist site, we have also alcohol here to protect the family, your family and the community too. At each door, we have infrared for fever survey and a health ID card for traveling a broad or quarantine person. And if you pass, you have a yellow mark here. And for regulation of accompanying the patient, only one person with a card with this card is permitted. If this person with fever or respiratory tract infection are not allowed, they should go home and change another people come here. And 14 days of travel or contact history is also not allowed. Uh, we also have medicine to go for patients with chronic prescription because they don't like to go inside the hospital. So in the outdoor open air, they could get their medicine. And then we also have telemedicine for quarantine patients because they could not go out, leave their home. So we could talk to them and what's their need. If they indeed need to come to hospital, we have an outdoor just that's beside ER area. This area could take care of them. And we also have instant sample collection because many of pay pe people, they stay at home and the public authority tells them to have some data specimen collection for confirmation, do in or do out of the disease. And we also have triage for our patients who come to ER, we, as you know, ER triage report condition, we have revised 17th edition for our use because when a new symptom or sign or new regulation was told, we revise it. So for example, fever, UI, abnormal test, smell, or unexplained diarrhea, 
uh, with a history traveling or cluster or any physician suspects, they will, they will be taxed to different area. And for some area was respiratory symptoms, they were, were carried to here. So subdivision in ER, respiratory zone and non-respiratory zone is very important. And when patients need to be admitted to, into the hospital, uh, they will be placed for confirmed or highly suspected cases where they will be admitted to a AIIR, airborne infection isolation room. For others, we admit them to quarantine or pneumonia ward here. Each room admit only one patient only. Uh, here is the future of our hospital, and we also monitor the pressure gradient for each room. And we also have on-site education and training for our uh, patient. This is the personal perfected equipment we need to wear, wear on in each condition. And uh, this is uh, dolph donning and dolphin, how to put on and put off the uh, clothes at each room as needed. They will be clear there. And this, we also built a negative pressure operation room for some cases, indeed, they need to have operation. Uh, also, we delay non-emergent examination surgeries, such as for COVID-19 confirmed case or exposure to the index case for 14 days traveling abroad. But actually, they might, might be need to have some operation, emergency examination. We have also sought for them if possible to negative SARS-CoV-2 PCR negative as possible during hospitalization. Uh, we also have documentary for our staff in need because they, could not, they don't want to go home to risk their family. So we, they have dormitory to stay. And then finally, let me talk, talk again. Bypass flow and subdivision at ER, OPD and ward as possible. We need to know where is the pollution zone and at each pollution breakpoint, wash the hand. Golden protection, mask and alcohol. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I don't know. I have any um, comments or question. First, maybe. Um, can I know Dr. Nabetani from Japan, uh, Yodogawa Christian Hospital? Is it still online? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. I know, uh, my my uh, uh, computer is uh, changed, and my name is uh, Makoto Nabetani. Uh, now uh, yes. I'm in charge of uh, uh, COVID 19 team in Yodogawa yeah. Christian Hospital. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah. Now, Would you like to Japan, yeah give us some comments or yes, feedback? Yes, yes, yes. Now, oh, in Japan, uh, the uh, number of, of patients with COVID nineteen is uh ten thousand over ten thousand, and uh at Osaka area, uh the number mm. is uh oh, ten thousand one thousand over one thousand, and uh. Oh, my hospital uh, hope with uh, over 10 uh, patients with COVID-19 uh, mm -hmm. and uh, now uh, the number is uh, increasing uh, rapidly also mm -hmm. in uh, at Osaka area so we are so thankful uh, for your uh, excellent lecture I, mm -hmm. ha I have uh, one question yeah uh, please mm -hmm. in Japan in Japan, uh, uh, I had uh, in Japan. Uh, if someone uh, uh, become uh, COVID nineteen, uh, we need to uh, touch uh, how uh, the patient uh, are infected by someone. But now, uh, unknown, unknown origin patients are increasing. It is a most important uh, problem in mm -hmm. Japan. I had that in Taiwan, uh, uh, that social uh, network uh, 
is so high developed and if when some patients uh, become you notice the information about uh, uh, what who uh, uh, the information about the patient uh, uh, when uh, the patient uh, uh, get high fever or uh, where uh, he, the patient go or every information uh, you uh, noticed on uh, the uh, normal uh, society uh, in mm -hmm. Japan we cannot uh, notice on uh, the human mm -hmm. so uh, we cannot prevent uh, uh, just we uh, say uh, the society say the government control only uh, to stay home mm -hmm. uh, the problem is uh, we cannot uh, but uh, now even now uh, in Japan <laughs> some uh, shops are open because we, uh, the government cannot control every uh, regulation of shops so we are so yeah. hard problem so uh, how do you uh, uh, I, I would like to know how do you uh, uh, communicate mm. or uh, yeah. uh, the information about uh, mm. the patient mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, in, in Taiwan, patient, uh, people who need to have home quarantine or home stay at home, home isolation, um all public authority will call them uh, every day and we also have used uh, uh, electronic device to monitor whether they go outside or not whether they have stay outside if they move outside the, where he lived and then, then the government will know and the policeman will know too Mm, 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 mm. And most of our people, they are they complain to this mm. condition. They they will <laughs> stay at home because the fine is high at most one million and mm -hmm. dollars. Yeah, mm, mm. the compliance rate is good in Taiwan. We are mm. we are lucky here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for your advice. I understand. Okay. Sikela, are you still there? Our friend from Malaysia? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. would you like to comment or give us some more feedback uh, about Malaysia? Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope yeah. everyone joining today is safe and uh, in a good health. Uh, first of all, yeah. I would like to thank uh, the Changhua Christian Hospital for organizing this webinar and inviting uh, Malaysian Friendship and Trade Center to be part of this uh, discussion. So as everyone knows, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak has affected every country in the world enormously. Mm. And Malaysia yeah. is not excluded. So as at April 23rd, we have more than 5,600 cases and 95 deaths. So as many other countries in the world, uh, Malaysia is, uh, we are also implementing measures to manage this outbreak and keeping uh, our people safe. So we are always in the lookout uh, to find and learn the best practices around the world to manage and contain the pandemic. So I think as pointed by many, uh, Taiwan continue to be one of the few that has successfully uh, curbed the spread of uh, the virus and all the while allowing uh, its citizens to maintain their normal life. So I think from this uh, series of webinars, we hope to learn uh, Taiwan best practices in managing 
and to fight the pandemic. So again, uh, thanks to Dr. Liu for sharing your experience. And I think we learned a lot uh, from this session. Again, thank you so much, especially to uh, uh, Changhua uh, Christian Hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sakela. Thank you. So next week, you, you, you have to join again. <laughs> Okay, next week will be like economic, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the expert for the next session. <laughs> yeah. So the next, uh, can I ask um, our friend from what I like? Yeah, from what I like. Um, I don't know Dr. Pong Pong or Dr. Udoma, um, Udong Sak is online or not? Okay, Dr. Udong Sak from Thailand. Oh, Dr. Udong Sak, good. Uh, I, I I have uh, one question to ask uh, the speaker. Uh, yeah, about, please. Uh, the decision to screen if uh, the diarrhea patient. Do in Taiwan you screen every cases with diarrhea, or use they need to have some other risk factor, or just mm. have diarrhea symptom and you you screen them for or. Of mm -hmm. the diarrhea patient for the COVID nineteen. That is my question. Yeah. Uh, in initial diarrhea is not included in the screening, but in early April, we started to use the screening diarrhea as a screening because some of the media uh, told they could find uh, diarrhea. And, and recently, some of them, if, especially from the United States, they saw they would say some of the skin uh, vesicle would be presentation. It would, could be SARS-CoV-2 infection too. It would be more difficult to see that. So that we should our doctor will take care of this point. Whether well, skin rush is another sign of this infection uh -huh. too. Uh, but it will be difficult to distinguish uh, between hand foot mouth disease and a SARS-CoV-2 infection. Yeah, it, it is very difficult. But yeah. at present in Taiwan, we anyone, any people, is, they think they need to have a screen, we will do it. Um, the, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so 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 now you kind of give the screening to everyone that they they suspect themselves as maybe at risk as uh, of yeah. the infection, right? Yeah. Okay. It, it, especially they come to hospital and they told the doctor in emergency area, I have severe uh -huh. cough, and we will test you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So 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 you test everyone like that, okay? Yeah. As possible. Yeah, I think in, in, in Thailand now, now, now the government uh, start doing that. But uh, like previous two or three weeks, uh, I think the, the capacity of the testing is not that much. But but now we have expanded uh, capacity because we, we have a lot more of the PCR testing installed in, in most of the province in Thailand. So, so we are now starting that too. And the cases in Thailand is actually very low now, like the new case. Today we have uh, 15 cases, and we have like 14, 15 cases for three days uh, already. So, so we may have zero cases within next week, like Taiwan. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, that is all my question. We, we also have another friend from Indonesia, Katina. Katina, are you there? Katina. Katina, you said you have question. Katina, up there. Katina, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me, Katina? Yeah, you can speak. Katina. Did you speak? Okay, it's me. Yeah. You're saying. Yes, I'm here, but I but, but, but I couldn't I cannot hear you. Mm. 
No, I cannot hear your voice. Yeah. Maybe maybe you have turned on your microphone. Okay, maybe uh, we are waiting you ready your microphone. And I would like to ask anyone you have question or comments you would like to share with us. Yeah, um, could I know that um, Bangkok Christian Hospital, anyone still online? Yeah, Dr. Chosak? Yes, hello. Yeah, hello. can you see? Yeah, would you, oh, good. Would you, like to, would you like to give us some of it back? Yay. <laughs> Uh, just a little comment from, from yeah, Bangkok, please, from, from please, Thailand. yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, in Thailand, we have had uh, 2,800 cases positive, and in Bangkok Christian, we detected around 31 cases. I see. And, yeah, and two of them were quite critical with AIDS and on respirator in the ICU. One mm. has already taken the respirator off, but one mm. is getting better. But I'd like to ask your comment about one policy that we are implementing of what you think. Now in Thailand and at Bangkok Christian Hospital, with our prevalence like this, we have introduced uh, a screening for everybody who is scheduled to go to the oh operating theater and the endoscopic room to have a positive test. Have you ever considered this in Taiwan? Hello. Hello, Nina. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the question is at our hospital and many hospitals in Thailand, we have introduced testing of the COVID PCR for every patient going to the operating theater or the endoscope or delivering babies. In Taiwan, would you consider this method if you have more cases or, are you, or do you have this post pro, uh, protocol to test them? Or would you think use this protocol if you have more cases? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th thank you. Uh, in Taiwan, we now are very few uh, cases of COVID-19 here. So we, we did not perform any uh, PCR for patient need to receive operation yet. Uh, but we have a, a strong check of their history for contact history or traveling history or any suspicious condition that might be COVID-19. Uh, especially from uh, in our hospital, we, we perform, uh, we advise anyone who has respiratory tract symptom or uh, fever, they might go to ER, emergency room for a test. And uh, the test will be performed on uh, four twice at uh, 24 hours apart. And uh, they will get the reports. Two negative tests, they are clear at that moment. But we do not do team to test the uh, outpatient condition. But in patients, they are already admitted in the hospital. We, we as infectious disease doctor, we will check our uh, hospitalization patient, whether they have newly diagnosed pneumonia or not. If they have new pneumonia or they have new unexplained fever or they have new respiratory chest symptoms, we will move them to the quarantine ward for, for a test. And uh, two tests, two negative tests will be necessary to, to test twice. And then when two twice negative PCR, they could be moved out from the quarantine ward. We have this uh, transitional zone, quarantine water uh, as used.
hear um, his voice, but he just texts me uh, his question. His question is how um, how you treat the patients and psychological aspect and uh, when they will be diagnosed as a positive in COVID. Oh, it will be a very tough one. Um, in our hospital, our psychiatrist will involve in the treatment team, uh, especially if the, the patients are very in disoriented, they need to let the patient calm down as soon as possible. Um, because for the COVID-19, uh, in fact, most of them are mild, mild illness. Only symptom, symptomatic treatment or supportive care are adequate. But we need to quarantine, put them in the isolation room. It's, it's more difficult for us. And uh, our psychiatric ward nurse will come to the infection ward for taking care of this part too. In our hospital, we not yet have a, a protecting room for such patients. But we have discussed this issue this week. Yeah. Very tough question. <laughs> Thank you. I think I, I, I think time is uh, almost uh, done. So thank you very much for everyone to participation. And actually, uh, this is I say this is a series of the the um, our um, webinar. So and um, for the next week, uh, next Friday, that's Zhang. Next Friday, we are going to invite. Um, um, Dr. Lee, he is from, um, he's, he, he is an expert and he's also the um, expert um, talking about the economic um, impact by the um, COVID-19. So um, next um, Friday, the same time, we also welcome all of you to join us to, to listen to Dr. Lee to share his research and his opinion. Yeah. So for all of our information, you can, uh, we have our website. So you, if you scan this website, you, if you scan this uh, uh, QR code, you can log into our website. And if you have any question about today's presentation, but you don't have time to ask, you can write email to us and I will um, forward this question, uh, the question to Dr. Liu and we will try to answer your question as possible as we can. Yeah. Uh, in the last minutes, can I ask uh, our uh, ambassador Tong Dashi? Yeah, would you like to say a few words, and we can we will going to close this session. Ambassador, are you there? Sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Alina. Uh, I think Taiwan's local transmission is quite low, and the vast majority of the confirmed cases been from overseas arrivals. So Dr. Leo has introduced very clearly from the perspective of hospital, but from a more comprehensive perspective, I just would like to add three more points. First one, Taiwan set up a central epidemic committee, uh, command center, uh, which has been set up in January and proactively coordinate various ministries and the leader campaign against the COVID-19 pandemic. So the central committee, central command center is very important to coordinate and lead a campaign. Second, I think Taiwan advocate public and private partnership. So we cooperate with the private sectors and very well to contain the um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Third one is that we utilize tracing and medical technology, including AI technology. So hopefully this will be uh, helpful to, uh, for your country to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you very much for your attention and wish you and your family being safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, bye, thank you everyone. Yeah, uh, yeah please join us. Yeah, please join us next week. Bye, bye-bye.